please remain standing and honor the gospel lesson as we read this morning from Luke's gospel, chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, A cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my Son, my Chosen. Listen to Him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the Word of God, for the people of God, Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I have exciting news. The movie, Transformers 5, is now in the works. And it's going to come out sometime in 2017. Isn't that great? Oh, yeah. We... <laughs> It's scheduled to be released sometime, like I said, in 2017. And for many of you, you're going to go back to see this fifth version of the Transformers movie. I have to confess, out of all the billions of dollars these four movies and then the fifth movie will eventually make, they've not received the first dollar from me. I have not seen Transformers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and really don't intend to go to Transformers 5. But some of you have. Some of you like this thing. For those of you like me who are somewhat out of the loop, I guess, what this is all about are these alien creatures that come down and they disguise themselves as normal everyday things like cars and airplanes, and then they transform into flying superhero, super fighting machines, just exorbitant machines. All this compiled or or, or, or along with all the special effects and different things that go on in the movie. It makes for entertaining uh, movies, I think. But uh, again, I have not seen very many of them. So it still still makes me wonder why. Why are these movies so popular? Some point to the nostalgia factor. And I can buy that. The Transformer toys came out in the 1980s. And thank goodness I had a little boy at the time. My older son was just old enough for me to have an excuse to go out and buy these toys. Because you brought them home and you had this little card. Then with just a few twists and turns, it became a robot. And then with a few more twists and turns, it went back to a car. It was pretty awesome. I really did like the Transformer toys and enjoyed playing with those toys with my son. But now those children of the 80s have grown up. They've married. They've, They've had kids of their own. And the first movie came out in 2007. And all these children of the 80s, they wanted to take their kids now to see this movie where things change and and transform into these superheroes, these flying robots that will defend the world. But perhaps, perhaps what intrigues us most about Transformers is the transforming itself. We're drawn to the idea of something so basic, something so simple, becoming something that's so powerful, something so mysterious, something that's just so downright awesome. What if my car wasn't a car, for example? What if my desk wasn't a desk? What if my toaster wasn't a toaster? That would be an interesting world. It's this world of change that draws many of us to the theaters over and over again to see the Transformers 
movies. Now, maybe it's a bit of a stretch. But it's been said that a line can be drawn between the transformers and the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. Think about it. The tagline for the toys and the films is this, more than meets the eye. Isn't that Jesus? The transfiguration was the moment the disciples got a glimpse of who Jesus really was. They saw for certain that He was more than just a man. Jesus stood before His disciples on top of that mountain and changed before their very eyes. He changed from a rabbi into a God-man. Even God in the flesh. And then God's voice came down and singled Him out as my beloved, my, my beloved Son, the long-awaited Messiah. He has divine authority. One who is greater than Moses. He was one greater than Moses who was the giver of the law. He was one greater than Elijah who was representing all of the prophets. Jesus was greater than Moses and Elijah combined. This glimpse of Jesus and of who Jesus would become, of who Jesus really was, left the disciples stunned. Their world was transformed through the transfiguration. When we hear about yet another Transformers movie, a lot of us respond with, so what? When we hear about Transfiguration Sunday, many of us respond in a similar disinterested kind of way. It makes sense for us to circle back to Christmas and Easter every year. Those are the big ones. But why must we circle back to Transfiguration? It's clear for most of us in this room this morning. Most of us would profess, uh, well, we understand that Jesus is God. We've established the fact that He's not just a man. He's divine. Why do we find ourselves on top of this mountain again? I'll confess as a pastor that I, along with other pastors, often find it difficult to find the words to say on these special Sundays of the Christmas year that come around again and again of trying to take the old, old story and trying to make it fresh and new and relevant for those of us in our congregations. But then I hear the words of Peter. As I hope you hear the words of Peter this morning. When he says, it is good for us to be here. The reason we return to the familiar ground on this mountaintop, watching once again as Jesus is transfigured, is not just because it comes up on the church calendar, but because it's good for us. It's good for us as His disciples to be here. You see, we still spend a great deal of time and energy as His followers followers trying to transform Jesus. We try to change and manipulate Him into something He's not. Like a child twisting a toy into a different shape that's exciting and new. We do the same with Jesus. Trying to twist Him and turn Him into something that will bring us joy and peace in everything we want Jesus to be. For example, there are some of us who still believe that Jesus was a a good man. A good man. But that's it. He was a good man with some good ideas and Every now and then I follow those good ideas if it's convenient for me and if those ideas fit my plan. We also think of Jesus as one Jesus as one who is um, a good luck charm. A good luck charm. Oh Jesus, I've got Jesus on my side. You know, I'm going I'm to be lucky. I'm going to get what I want. Or, or Jesus is, is nothing more than a, a way to success. A pathway to success. It's kind of like Jesus in a genie bottle, rub the bottle, Jesus comes out, grants our wishes. We've made Jesus into many things. We've made Jesus into this good old buddy. Whenever we need Jesus, Jesus come along. Jesus come along for the ride, but when we don't need that good buddy, we say, Jesus, I got it now, I don't need you so much. I got this, I'll take care of it. So why do we return, why do we return to this familiar ground in today's Scripture? Because it's good to be confronted with the truth. The truth is that Jesus, Jesus is not who we've made Him out to be. Jesus is more than we could ever imagine. 
Jesus is holier than we could ever imagine. Jesus is better than we can ever imagine. Jesus is, is greater than we could ever imagine. We need the transfiguration because it breaks us out of our self-serving ideas of Jesus and brings us back to the stunning, heart-warming, breathtaking truth of who Jesus really is. Who's Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? Have you transformed Him? Or has He transformed you? Jesus is not just a great man. He's greater than the great teacher Moses and the great prophet Elijah. He's not just an enlightened man. He's God in flesh. He's not your card to be played when you need to play the Jesus card in an argument. Or a puppet to heed your commands. He's the Father. The Father's beloved Son. Listen to Him. He's the one true God. He rules over us. Our response to this should be our worship, should be our praise. To ask Him to forgive us, to ask Him to transform our hearts. We can't change in our own. We try sometimes. We have to recognize though that Christ is really who He is. Christ is first and foremost our Savior. Christ is our Redeemer. Christ is our Transformer. You may recall that the first miracle that Jesus performed was at the, the wedding in Cana of Galilee. What did He do there, you remember? The wine ran out, didn't it? And Jesus took the water and he, he transformed it into wine. But was it just everyday regular wine? No. He transformed it into the best wine. And I want you to hear today, people of God, this very clearly. Jesus is still in the transformation business. Jesus will take our lives and not just transform them into something that's an everyday life, a routine life. Jesus will take our life and change it into the best. Change it for the better. Change us so that we'll be better persons, better disciples, better than we thought we could ever be because we've allowed Jesus to come into our hearts and to manipulate, to twist and turn our hearts into the person that God wants us to be, into the new creation God calls all of us to be in Jesus Christ. As we come to the end of our annual pilgrimage up the mountain, we've been reminded of the power and the glory of Jesus Christ. The story for many of us wasn't anything new, but you know something? To me, every time I read it, every time I hear it, I have to say, wow. Wow. This may be the first, the second, the third, the fifth, the tenth, the fiftieth time you've heard this story. But we need the transfiguration. We need the transfiguration to remind us that Jesus is more than just a man. He is more than meets our eyes. He is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, our Redeemer, our Savior, who transforms our hearts so that we may receive the hope and assurance that even in death, our lives will be transformed into new creations for all eternity. Thank you, Lord. For being who you are. And for not being what I try to make you out to be. Thanks be to God. Amen.